Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadToRuta.com. Good morning, Horn of Z's, your sip of coffee. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that we're having a crypto pullback. <laughs> I hate it when it runs too far too fast. Um, got a little pullback in the last 24 hours, which is good. It's healthy. Um, is it orchestrated? I hope so. <laughs> because if it isn't orchestrated, that means it's free market. And we know there's no free market. <laughs> so if it's orchestrated and it's a little pullback, that means they they don't want to go crazy yet. Absolutely. What happens last last time it went crazy went from what six thousand to twenty thousand. Blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. One month's time. November, mid November to mid December. So any pullback when there's a lot of green for a week or so, any pullback is great. It is strong. It is healthy. It is good for cryptos. Is it a manipulated pullback? I hope so, um, because all it means is we don't want it to run too far too fast. I've said it many times, I'm so much more fearful at the highs than I am at the lows. But I'm a hodler, so what does it matter, right? If you're a hodler, you don't, you know, you don't even look at this stuff most of the time. But it's a very important time right now. So there are things we need to talk about, and it is, it you should absolutely be prepared for chaos in in the financial systems, not just the cryptos, all financial systems. As the old system dies. There's going to be a lot of connections that screw up cryptos, as in they'll stop trading and you won't be able to, a bank goes down, one bank, Deutsche Bank, and all of a sudden no cryptos can ever be traded and the prices can't be determined because the exchanges aren't open because of the cascade effect, bank upon bank upon bank. So you have to be prepared to, to just sit out for a while. Just sit out and say, okay, I'm not going to get involved until this is fixed. That's why hodling is so important. Don't have your money in any third party and there's all kinds of news out lately that just proves it for example uh my ether wallet got a hack hack they hacked into the servers and it's actually it's a really complicated hack uh hackers emptied ethereum wallets by breaking the basic infrastructure of the internet so the way this works at midnight eastern time last night my ether wallet users started noticing something odd. Connecting to the service, users were faced with an unsigned SSL certificate, a broken link in the site's verification. It was unusual, but it's the kind of thing web users routinely click through without thinking. Heads up right there. If you're in cryptos and you're dealing with your private wallet at all in any way, shape, or form, don't click through anything without thinking. But anyone who clicked through the certificate warning was redirected to a server in Russia, which proceeded to empty the user's wallet. Judging by wallet activity, the attackers appeared to have taken at least 13,000 Ethereum during two hours before the attack was shut down. Uh, $13,000 is not a lot of Ethereum unless it's yours, right? The attacker's wallet already contained more than 17 million in Ethereum. 17 million is a pretty decent hack. My Ether Wallet confirmed the attack in a statement on Reddit. Quote, we are currently in the process of verifying which servers were targeted to help resolve the, this issue as soon as possible. We advise users to run local offline copies of My Ether Wallet. Always run offline copies of My Ether Wallet. Um, that's why this is so important to have nobody between you and your cryptos. This In this situation, if you had like a paper wallet with My Ether Wallet, uh, you would have been fine. Now, it's that moment that it comes back online that you're at risk. And if you if you were the person who went online, got redirected to a different server, got the malicious site, and brought your, your cryptos back online, you know, they give you all kinds of warnings, to be careful. Um, but this would have looked like exactly the same thing because you logged into the correct site, yeah, that's when they're vulnerable, when when a third party can get their hands on it, is when it comes back online. So just keep your cryptos offline until you absolutely need them. And then when you do need them, that's when you got to be ultra, ultra, ultra crazily careful. Um, so this could, could have happened to Coinbase. It could have happened to Kraken. It could have happened to Poloniex. It could have happened to any wallet um, if you store your 
cryptos online and on your phone. It's going to happen to phones too. So just, just remove all your cryptos into your own possession using like a Trezor wallet or a Nano Lezer S um, or paper wallets. And make sure you create them offline. And they, they give you instructions most of the places do, right? Or you can just look on YouTube how to do that. It's just, it's so crazily important that it's done right now because there's going to be more hacks and more sophisticated hacks. And it's just going to come over and over again as the cryptos become more uh, part of our financial system. And then people are going to use these excuses for reasons why they slam the cryptos down. Reasons why, no, cryptos will never work. Um, but cryptos are anti-fragile. My Ether wallet is anti-fragile. They're going to fix this problem so that the same problem can never happen again. And then so the, the hackers will have to think up a new way to do it. Um, but this was very sophisticated, which leads me to think it was one of the core developers. <laughs> Because it, it, they attacked a, an Ethereum wallet, which is you know all the all the altcoins are held. Um, <clears throat> it's just my gut. Who knows? I'm not going to blame any specific core developer, but all those uh, core developers who are expert, the world's greatest computer programmers, according to Tone Vase, um, yeah, they don't like Ethereum. They don't like anything related to the. Ethereum and anything they can do to help destroy it, they probably would in the middle of the night in their basement, as uh, uh, Brad Sherman says. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, great lesson to keep all your cryptos offline in your own possession. If you don't possess your private keys, you don't. You're subject to hacks, cracks, you name it. Now here's another interesting Ethereum proposal to resurrect the disabled 360 million. Parity contracts shut down. So uh, this is a, you guys, I talked about this a long time ago. Let me just read through this. A week-long vote on a proposal in regards to the Parity hack wallet reversal, which proposed to restore a disabled contract to unfreeze 587 wallets, holding three or 513,774 Ethereum, equal to around $360 million at today's prices, has ended with a majority no vote. So, if you remember, Parity, you got these wallets frozen up. I mean, they weren't stolen. They were just frozen. 387 wallets, 500,000, over 500,000 Ethereum. So, they put it to a vote and to people who had a stake in Ethereum. And the people said, no, you know, hey, let the buyer beware. This is not a good thing to uh, fork Ethereum to help out people who lost cryptos. So those, those uh, 360 million in, in ETH, uh, it was a lot more back then, I think, or, or at least it was in December, are still sitting there. And they will be sitting there until someone can figure out how to get them out of there safely with the community voting yes. I, I, they came close. It was 55% no and then um, a 40-something percent yes. Um, but, it, but it gets back to... You know, a lot of people who have newfound wealth are not going to risk their wealth for anything. Absolutely anything. It's kind of the, the core belief of the core programmers in Bitcoin is, you know, they're not going to sacrifice security for speed of contract and all that. They want to be the gold of cryptos. And But there's pros and cons. Um, what do I think about this? I think, I think they should have done it. I think they should have allowed it to, to go on. They've done it before. Uh, the DAO hack or issues um, they fixed. That's what created ETH, uh, Ethereum Classic. So, but I get I get why people would vote no. You know, if it doesn't affect you, I bet you anybody who had money in those wallets voted yes. <laughs> um, but a lot of people like uh, Parity is on the hook for that, and I think they have a lot of money. <laughs> Maybe $360 million isn't worth it. I don't know. I don't know. Just another reason. Keep your wallets in your own possession, people. And on that note, let's go right here. <clears throat> Ulster Bank blames human error for vanishing cash problem. Customers will not be out of pocket as a result of the computer issue. Bank promises. So this bank in Ireland uh, basically drained everybody's cash out of their, out of their accounts. 
You can see a lot more of this. Uh, we all heard about the uh, was it uh, uh, was it I think the Deutsche Bank or one of the banks that sent like thirty five billion dollars accidentally. These things don't happen accidentally. Human error was behind the disappearance of money, including monthly salaries from accounts of Ulster Bank customers over the weekend. While the bank has now established the cause of the issue following an urgent investigation, it is not expected to be resolved, and money is not set to return to customers' accounts until Wednesday. Can you imagine? Not People are so used to having their relying on their bank, on that third party to be there when they go out for dinner or whatever. So people are going out for dinner with credit cards and getting shut down, calling their bank and say, oh, sorry, we have a computer glitch. Well, I got to pay my dinner tab. <laughs> so another reason to have some cash. This is going to happen all over the world very soon. Um, when the banks start going down, J or JP Morgan will go down and then every bank will go down. Um, the question is how fast will it Will it be rejiggered? In this case, it's going to take a week. Is that good or is that bad? They, no, wait. It's not going to take a week. I don't know how long it's going to take. They don't, really didn't say. Um, probably 24 hours. But that's just one bank and one thing to solve. And the central bank can come in and, and gloss over that and you know, give them. They can create that money out of thin air. It doesn't matter. As long as it didn't go to someone else. That's the key. Did it go to somebody else? And so you have an accounting issue. Um... But when the banks shut down, you're going to have to have cash, physical cash, in your own possession. Uh, the crypto markets will be shut down at that point in time, obviously, because, you know, how do you value it? How do you take put money in, take money out on the crypto? Um, something like uh, the Shapeshift will be open, but, you know, you can just switch a crypto for a crypto. So there's going to be a lot of chaos coming down the pike. Uh, keep an eye on Deutsche Bank. Now's just the time to be prepared for that chaos. I don't think it's going to happen until September, October. The big stuff, as in like, you know, all the big stuff are coming down this year. Um, and I do think the old system, this will be the year the system dies. And we'll have another 2008 this year. Uh, it was on the cover of the, not only was it on the cover of the 1987 or 88 uh, Economist magazine, um, where they say, get ready for a world currency. The only way to get a world currency is to destroy the old system. Uh, but it was also inside the cover in the 2000, I think it was the 16, 2016, um, the world in 2016, The Economist magazine, and it had a picture of Alan Greenspan pulling the lever and it's switching over to 2018. 2018 is the year the crypto and the year the old system dies. I'm not saying it'll die overnight. It, it's clear that the Federal Reserve is going to start their own cryptocurrency, but it will be controlled. And they even said there that they're, you know, it, it would be senseless for a central bank or a sovereign country to create a um, an uncontrollable cryptocurrency. And that's fine. It, the U.S. can do whatever they want. The Fed can do whatever they want, as long as they don't bother us doing what we want. And from the article yesterday that I read, on the Fed, St. Louis, L-O-U-I-S, everybody was laughing at my spelling. I spelled it L-E-W-I-S. I don't know why. I have an uncle named, uh, his last name is Louis, so that's that's probably got what, in, what got in my head. But um, it's clear that the Federal Reserve System is preparing for uh, competition among currencies. That's great. I mean, that's what humanity needs. Um, and the U.S. will, you know, do anything they want with a crypto. I, I wouldn't even call it a cryptocurrency if it is a controlled mechanism, a centralized mechanism um, <clears throat> that won't take over the world. It's it's the the decentralized ones that will take over the world, and that's exactly what the Fed says. And it shouldn't take over the world. Uh, you shouldn't give people power over something so important, and that's what the Fed said. <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely loved it, especially with what's going on in politics these days. Um, so yeah, great time to get your cash in your pocket for the coming chaos. How much will you need? I don't know, but there's going to be no cash flowing out there either. So it's like bring small bills because no one's going to be able to make change. Um, but I don't think it will last too long. So you don't need a lot of cash. I would say a couple of weeks worth would, should be fine. Um, but but things will be going at a premium. Cash will be at a premium. Physical cash, because no one will have any. Um, lots to think about. Lots to think about in the coming chaos. 
And that's, I guess, what this is about. Uh, Prepare for the coming chaos. And the first thing you need to do is make sure your cryptos are secure and in your own possession. And then uh, I'm happy about the crypto pullback. Um, That means steady as she goes. We're not going to get into bubble territory, at least not in the next couple of weeks. Uh, This is Big Square. RoadToRuda.com. Don't forget to go to Road to Ruda right here, RoadToRuda.com, and sign up. Subscribe in the far left right here to get emails about this stuff. So we have the website where you get emails to right to your email account almost daily. And then there's the uh, YouTube channel where most of the content uh, gets turned into a video. But there's also 3,000 articles here that you might want to do a search for. And um, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I think you'll like it. It's a big swear. I'll talk to you guys later.